Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna be partying together this $1,300 gaming PC sponsored by Antec. Antec was nice enough to send over their dark cube case, which is, well, a cube case that is very portable, has a cool handle. At least I think that's a handle on it the back. It looks like a handle. But yeah, we don't really know a ton about this case. They sent it over. Um, we're gonna just dive into it, see what kind of features it has. But I do know it is a small form factor case designed for, well, micro ATX or mini ITX motherboards. So we're excited to put together this PC. Um, and yeah, check out Antec. Antec makes a lot of different cases for your PC build, has some nice RGB fans. We do a lot of PC builds with them on the channel, so be sure to check their products out in the description down below. And special thanks again to Antec for sponsoring today's video. All right, guys, so we have the Intel 11500. Now, you could get the 11400 realistically and have pretty much the same performance, but we got this because we were testing out the integrated graphics on it, although we have a nice graphics card to go with this now, but to cool the 11500, we have an up here cooler, which I think they just started making tower coolers because before we used to use all their fans and we never heard of them having coolers. So we'll get to open this up soon and see what it looks like, but I'm pretty excited for it. We have an MSI B560M Pro, and yeah, this is a B560 because, well, we're on 11th gen. You could technically get away with using, you know, a B460 if you update the BIOS and everything, but we wanted one that was gonna work out of the box and it has Wi Fi built in. A lot of people want that Wi Fi. Wi Fi. Now for RAM, we have two sticks of 8 gigs, so 16 total. 3200 megahertz team grip ram it's not super fancy rgb it's just their vulcan uh, z ram it's in gray it'll, it'll do the job 3200 megahertz is plenty fast and hey we're actually on a new generation so hopefully we can actually use the high speeds now for storage this is one i have not seen before this is a, another team group item this is the t-force cardia zero one terabyte NVMe SSD. It says it has a 9% cooldown. I don't even know what that means. I'm assuming that means it runs cooler, but um, it's NVMe and uh, it's not Gen 4, it's Gen 3, but realistically with a build like this, it's not like super high end. So you really don't need Gen 4 unless you really want it, but you don't want it. You don't want it. You don't, you don't want, want it. it. Now for the graphics card. Big thanks to PowerColor for sending over this 6700 XT Hellhound Edition. Now, this card is really hard to get, so that $1,300 is kind of like an MSRP, so do keep that in mind. But if you do use the link in the description down below, we'll try our best to link this stuff. But the 6700 XT is a great budget card from AMD, which, from doing some research on the used market, you can actually pick these things up. Yes, they are higher than the MSRP, but they are a little bit of a better value compared to the other cards that are being scalped right now. So definitely consider this card if you're looking to build a high-end gaming rig and uh yeah this one for power color is gonna look really awesome and for the power supply, we went with Corsair for this one. This is the CX550M, which is a modular power supply. It is 650 watts, which is more than enough. And their CX line is normally very reliable and has some nice cables to come with it. So it should work out really well. And especially in a small form factor case like this, we don't want any extra cables that we don't need to make cable management very easy. And now to the case, which, well, we're gonna add some up here RGB fans too. You can always get fans from Antec as well, but for this build, we're using some up here RGB fans, basic RGB fans, you can get those. But the dark cube case from Antec, this thing is freaking awesome. It looks really unique. Um, we'll go around to the back here real quick. As you can see, the GPU kind of sits up here, so you can see it like glowing in the top, totally different design, totally unique. So I guess the, the fans exhaust up here. I uh, have a power supply basement, supports a full size power supply, which is pretty important for a build like this. You have to spend extra on like a mini ITX power supply or SFX power supply. Um, and yeah, everything seems to like come out of this tray from builds that I've seen, but I'm not totally sure this is gonna be a little bit of a different building experience, but I'm very excited to see what this thing looks like when we're done. How would I waste any more time and put this thing together?
All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that we have this small form factor gaming PC all booted up and ready to go, let's talk about a couple benchmarks real quick. Now we decided to test this PC in a couple of titles, those being Call of Duty Cold War, Fortnite, Rainbow Six Siege, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Apex Legends. First up in Call of Duty Cold War on high settings at 1080p, we start to see how powerful the RX 6700 XT really is, getting over 130 plus FPS, sometimes into the 150s. Now yes, the 6700 XT in my opinion is more of a 1440p card, but if you're somebody who wants to max out games at 1080p and get a high refresh rate gaming experience, you really can't go wrong with something like the 6700 XT. It really is an awesome card. It is really hard to get right now, but as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, supply of the 6700 XT is slightly higher than some of the other newer cards on the market, especially the cards from Nvidia, which are impossible to get. Therefore, the scalper market isn't nearly as bad. Yes, it is still very expensive, and I probably would suggest still waiting if you can to build a brand new gaming rig but you can actually buy these and they're not the worst price in the world so do keep that in mind next up in fortnite on pro settings which is epic view distance everything else on low we averaged over 200 plus fps i've been having some issues with fortnite not getting nearly as high frames as it used to i'm assuming it's probably to do with some updates in fortnite but still getting over 200 plus fps in a game like fortnite at 1080p with a combination of a 6700 xt and 11500 it's still very impressive and I really do think having that higher clocked RAM makes a really big difference with this new Intel architecture because uh, last gen on the B460 boards being limited to 2933 made it really hard for those i5s to truly stretch their legs. But now the 11500 and 11400 can get RAM all the way up to 4000 megahertz on a B560 board, which makes it a really good budget option. And Jackson just walked into the room while I'm finishing this voiceover. Is he coming in to say something to me? I don't know. Next up is a game that we like to test, Rainbow Six Siege, with a built-in benchmark on pretty much max settings. We average 295 FPS. 295 FPS is a big number, and really Rainbow Six Siege is a pretty easy game to run, but a lot of people want to play it with competitive settings, and you could easily run 1080p 240 hertz if you wanted to with Rainbow Six Siege on this PC. So if you're looking for something like that, you should definitely consider this option. Next up in Shadow the Tomb Raider on high settings using the built-in benchmark, we average over 139 FPS. That's a crazy number. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider is our AAA benchmark of choice. So if you're looking to play games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, any newer AAA titles out there, maybe even like Cyberpunk at 1080p, you should get a well over 60 FPS experience with this PC, no problems whatsoever. And last but certainly not least, a game we added to the rotation recently is Apex Legends. And on pretty much max settings at 1080p, we hit that built in FPS cap of 144 FPS pretty much all the time. If you guys know how to break this FPS cap, let me know in the the comment section down below. I'd be happy to adjust it for future benchmarks, but getting a pretty much locked 144 FPS in a game like Apex, which is highly competitive, is really no easy feat, and still, it makes for a really awesome gaming experience. So overall, I'm incredibly happy with this PC build for the money. It is very compact. This case from Antec provides some really awesome airflow and a very unique design and makes for a pretty awesome PC for the money. So if you guys want to pick this thing up, be sure to use the links in the description down below. We'll try to leave as many options as we can for you to buy a graphics card because, well, that is the hardest part right now. But overall, very happy we had the opportunity to build this PC. How about we go in and bring Jackson back in here to wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so as you probably guessed, the 6700 XT paired with that i5, well, basically no game can stop it from maxing out. And this case from Antec is actually very unique. I mean, the design obviously is very unique, but it's kind of an inverted uh, build, so everything's kind of upside down. But the graphics card, you can see all the nice RGB on the top, which looks really cool. And uh, overall, I'm very happy with this build. It wasn't super complicated to build in. There are some weird things you have to do when using a micro ATX board, because some of the stuff is very tight, so just do keep that in mind running with the CPU power ahead of time is probably a good idea before putting the board in. Um, but yeah, overall fun case. Check the link in the description down below to buy this and any of the other parts used in today's PC build. They are affiliate links and they do help us out. So we appreciate you guys watching today's video. Make sure if you haven't already to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toasty rose. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. So a quick plug real quick to all of our other social medias, aside from our other YouTube channels and Twitch, we also have Instagram, Twitter, we even have a deal page on Twitter, and we have Facebook, we got it all. And we're trying to stay relevant by making a TikTok, so check the link in the description down below, follow us on TikTok, see some behind the scenes stuff from the Toasty Bros HQ if you can't get enough.